Okay. So uh, we could talk for a long time about the problems of discrimination in the US or in Europe, but there are quite high level questions also. Okay. But generally, we should uh, go with the UN Human Rights Report, right? That people shouldn't discriminate against uh, the other people. Of course, people do, and it's honest of you guys to admit that you might do that. We have to work towards uh, equality. So the next part is the Human Development Index. So this is not using just the GDP, but also using uh, mean expected years of schooling and health, such as life expectancy. Putting all these things together and making a score for each country. So how does it work? For example, if I am earning $1,000 a year and my income goes up to $5,000 a year, I'm going to be much happier than if I was earning $50,000 a year and my income went up to $54,000, right? Both people went up $4,000, but the $4,000 was much better for me because my income was low to start with. So this is using a logarithm. So each higher level of income changes the HDI by a smaller increment. So we go up $1,000 at, at a low level, it makes a big difference. But $1,000 at a high level hardly makes any difference in the Human Development Index. Okay? So you can look at the uh, internet and also the graph, but here we can see which country has the highest human development according to the UN? Norway. Norway. Okay. Australia. So you can also see these countries on uh, some list by Forbes magazine or Business Week or so on. Best countries in the world to live, that kind of thing, right? High human development index, high life expectancy, high income, and a lot of education. Okay, so Norway, life expectancy, 81. Years of school, 12.6. Uh, 17.6, the national income, 63,000. Uh, PPP. Where's Norway? Yes. Hmm? Where's Norway? Norway, here. Yeah. No, I mean like Northern Europe. Oh, wow. I'll show you on the <laughs> top. <laughs> See, Norway. Norway and Sweden. Sweden is here and Norway is here. Oh. So, Denmark is here. So, this is Scandinavia. Have you ever heard of the Vikings? Yes. Have you watched the TV show Vikings? It's filmed in Ireland, it's quite good. You can search for the show Vikings. It's done by the History Channel. History Channel made the program, but it's also interesting. Have you watched the movie Vikings? Or the program Vikings? Series, right? Series on History Channel. Have you seen it? Yes? Okay. So, uh, these countries usually do quite well, like I said before, on these kind of indicators. Uh, Korea is not too bad, number 15. But what can we see about Korea here? Korea's income is lower than the other countries, 30,000 uh, US dollars, right? Even with PPP. But Korea does better on uh, life expectancy and schooling, on health and education. So if we compare Korea to the US, I will notice this because I lived in both the US and Korea. The US is number five. You can get a higher income in the US, $50,000 compared to $30,000 in Korea, right? PPP. But the US doesn't have as good health service and doesn't have as good education for, especially the US has education system is better for uh, graduate schools, master's degrees, and PhD degrees, right? So here they're not really looking at that, they're looking more at the secondary, primary secondary education. So. so we can see the countries again here, the dark green is the, using the Human Development Index. So Korea is 27th for GDP per capita of 12th in the index. However, Kuwait is third for GDP per capita and 55th in the HDI. So Kuwait, a very rich country, but they don't have good hospitals or good school system in Kuwait, right? Quite uh, they have a lot of oil money, but because they have a lot of oil money, they haven't had to modernize their economy. Saudi Arabia is quite similar. So 
So they haven't really modernized their economy. They haven't been forced to do that because they don't have to be competitive economies. They just have a rentier economy. So uh, here's the World Happiness Report. So which are, are the happiest countries in the world? Okay, another report. Okay, are people in Korea happy? No. Why not? Suicide. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they also look at that probably at suicide rate. Why are people in Korea not happy? It's a very competitive society. Any other reason? Hmm? Education? Yes. Because well, of Korea's people education people. is a good score. No, the professor. Who <laughs> 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 finishes class the first? Who finishes class every 20 minutes? <laughs> 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 years of schooling. So the time of schooling is important. <laughs> so if you miss out some time of schooling, you get lower score. So it's the opposite, right? Never. The longer schooling you get, the better wow. your score. Thank you very much. <laughs> so the World Happiness Report, maybe you think people are not happy because they have to study too long? Korea? Yeah. <laughs> they have to work long hours, I think is one of the reasons, yeah. right? Korean people work, and Japanese people work, it's one of the longest hours in the world. And also, I read a report that in the workplace, Korean people feel their opinion is not considered enough in the workplace. So they don't feel happy because their employer doesn't consider their opinion enough. Actually, Denmark should be the happiest nation in the world. Why is that? They said, scientists said it's because of, uh, how do you call it, uh, DNA. Yeah, DNA. Really? Yeah, they said they did the research, I don't know. Well, we can see some happy countries here in South America and in Africa, uh, over here in Asia too, right? Even though they are not rich, they can still be, make this happiness, happiness uh, be happy. Uh, do you know? I mentioned before about Iran. Iran is an interesting country. They don't say normally in countries' constitutions they say we want to develop our economy, right? But Iran doesn't have anything like that. They, they are the strictest Islamic state, so they say the money is not important. So we don't care about. They don't say we don't care about developing our economy, but they don't actually write anything about their GDP in their constitution or developing their economy in that way. So, happiness may not be related to GDP, right? Some countries are happy, which is not high GDP. So we also have to take in this into account uh, when we're thinking about uh, how, judging how countries are doing, right? Are the people happy is also important. So these days, uh, discuss with your partner, do you think that the unequal countries are going to become closer or further away. So the, are the low income countries going to move closer to the high income countries? The gap is going to get smaller. Or the low income countries are going to move further away from the high income countries? The gap will get bigger. What do you think will happen in the future? <coughs> getting closer, converging. Getting further away, diverging. Discuss with your partner.
trend in the past, uh, we had the Industrial Revolution, the countries got further apart, imperialism, the Second World War was all about imperialism, uh, you had the Soviets, the Japanese, the Germans and the English and the Americans fighting over who's going to be the ruler of the world, right? Who won? Americans and the Russians, right? So then we had the Cold War between America and Russia. Who won the Cold War? No one. <laughs> Stalemate, right? Well, generally the US performed better, right? So we have mainly, if we have an imperialist country now, it's probably the US, but not the strong one, right? After World War II, the end of this kind of imperialism. Japan was uh, colonizing Korea before World War II, right? So we have Technological development, which is convergence, because of the technological developments, uh, countries in low income countries can uh, move up. One example is this online courses that they made, that you guys signed up for, right? That people can get access to this course now in any country with the internet. Uh, economic reforms, so China. India, Russia opened up. Okay, so because they made economic reforms and opened up to the world, they were able to improve their GDP and the gap was getting lower. So what do you think about the future? <coughs> miso trade, trade, trade miso. What do you think will happen in the future? Convergence coming together or divergence going apart? Convergence. Convergence, why? Anybody else? Have any idea? Do you agree? Convergence? Okay, maybe we can, we can, with technological developments and economic reforms, we can continue this trend of uh, converging. So hopefully uh, we, can, we can see this project we said that Facebook and other companies are involved in with bringing the internet to more and more countries. Uh, China is picking up the technology more quickly than people thought, right? Catching up very quickly on technology and uh, catching up with the other countries in that area, okay? So, <clears throat> why do some countries stay poor? They don't change, always poor. So we discussed this a little bit about why countries are poor while others are rich, but this is also why do they pay? Stay poor. So the study of this we call clinical economics. We have clinical medicine, which is deciding, saying what exactly is the problem or the cause. So first of all, we have geography. <coughs> Temperate zones or coastal zones developed faster, and we also have disease areas. And we have um, mosquitoes, which carry diseases, right? Malaria. So countries with malaria, it's hard for them to move up, right? Also the imperialism. So the modern economist 
Instead of offering one simple diagnosis, like we said, stop your corruption, one prescription, doctor gives you a prescription to buy drugs, cut government spending, or one referral, go to the IMF for treatment. The effect development practitioner should make a diagnosis that is accurate for the history, geography, culture, and economic structure of the country in question. So every country is different. So we can't just say to, like you said earlier, right? We can't just say, the problem is corruption. So stop corruption and everything will be okay, right? Uh, or just get the IMF, get the IMF, they'll solve the problems, okay? It's not going to work. We have to make a specific uh, one for each country. So this is the po poverty checklist, reasons for poverty and staying in poverty. We wrote some at the start. So we have a poverty trap. Poverty trap means basically we can use it in our own life, where we just don't have enough money to get out of poverty. Okay? So some people, they might have the ability to get out of a bad situation, but they just don't have the money to start to get out of a bad situation, or they don't have the support they need to start to get out of a bad situation. So they can never do that. So they're caught in the poverty trap. Just they have to work uh, just to earn money to eat, and they never have time to improve themselves or do anything like that. That's what the poverty trap is called. So some countries are like that. They have a lot of debt in Africa. They owe a lot of money. They have to pay back the interest on the, on the debt. Right? So they don't have, they're just working just to survive and keep going, but they don't have enough money to develop themselves. So they're caught in a poverty trap. Uh, Bono from U2 suggested to relieve the debt of all the third world countries, right? Or transition economies. He made a big campaign but in the end, it didn't work. <laughs> the other countries didn't agree, but I agree with Bono, right? I think they should just cut the debt of the, these 50 countries, right? But they have cut the debt of some countries, just a few, a handful of countries, like very poorest countries, they don't think they're going to pay back anyway. They said, you don't need to pay back the loans, right? Secondly, bad economic policies. Uh, the government, the government makes bad decisions. Uh, Ireland used to be a very poor country, like Korea, 30 or 40 years ago. So Portugal was a wealthier country than Ireland. And Ireland and Portugal, both being on the edge of Europe, they got a lot of money from the EU. But the Portuguese said that the Irish government spent the money a lot better than the Portuguese government. The Portuguese government wasted a lot of money on bad projects, right, bad policies. On the other hand, the Irish government made some free education system, right? So they don't pay fees for it to third level. And they made some log roads and infrastructure with the money. So the government policy also matters. A financial insolvency of governments, governments which go bankrupt, they lose the confidence of the markets. They can't lend money if they go bankrupt. Physical geography, like Haiti, they always get some disaster because of where they are, they get some storm, very bad storms. Have you ever played SimCity on the computer? <laughs> uh, do you use no disasters? Usually if I play, I pick no disasters, then it's easy. But if you keep having a lot of disasters, it's not going to be easy to make your country. You can see Nepal also has a lot of earthquakes. Chile is another country with a lot of earthquakes. Poor governance. Cultural barriers, so like Iran, we said that Iran's constitution, they're a very strict Islamic religion, so they don't believe in, in being rich, right? They don't want to be rich. So uh, geopolitics like Afghanistan, Afghanistan is always in the middle of the east and the west, so almost always there is some war in Afghanistan. 20 or 30 years ago, the Russians invaded Afghanistan, nowadays uh, NATO or the US is in Afghanistan, right? So just where your country is located. So what do you notice about this map? This is all settlements with a population of half a million or larger. Let's look at China. Where do all the people live in China, half a million or larger? Hmm? On the coast, right? They live next to the sea. What about in Africa? 
same, right? What about in the US? South America. So the poorer areas are the inland areas. Inland areas of sub-Saharan Africa. Why, why do you think that is? <coughs> why does it matter where your country is located? Fishing, yes. Ports. Do you understand port? Yeah. Yeah. Port trading. Trading goods. Are you close to a seaport or not? If you're in here, it's going to be hard to get things. Okay. If it's there, it's easy. The ship comes across and we can get there. So the country's average distance to a major port. So we can see that if your country, here are all the words major ports. So if you're far away from the port, be difficult. Uh, you mentioned the reserves, natural resources. Here's coal. Coal used to be more important a longer time ago, but China still uses a lot of coal, maybe 40% or more for their energy. It's quite a dirty uh, energy source. In the EU, this was the biggest problem when setting up the EU coal, because uh, they have free trading, but different countries had different prices for coal. So. That was a problem. Who has all the oil? This is the oil map. One thing we can notice about who has all the oil is that a lot of them are enemies of the US, apart from Saudi Arabia. So we can see Saudi Arabia, they're good buddies with the US. The US sells them fighter planes and they invest a lot of money in the US. So largely go along with US policy. Saudi Arabia is the biggest producer. Then we have Iran. Currently under economic sanction from the US, uh, negotiating about a nuclear agreement. We have Iraq, was accused by George Bush of making nuclear weapons, but in the end was found out that they weren't. But anyway, the US were still there. Nowadays there is an ongoing war over oil plants. Do you, do you know ISIL? ISIS? Why do you think they're fighting against? Why do you think they're fighting? What do you think they're fighting for? Guns and oil. Just the oil, right? They, they captured one oil plant, it meant they got 10 million a day. They were getting 10 million dollars a day. This group of terrorists who captured one oil plant in Iraq. Do you want to go to Iraq and fight and get an oil plant? Then you can make 10 million a day, right? You can make your own group. Okay. Could be quite risky. <laughs> Obama wouldn't be very happy if you're taking his oil. Anyway, even Hillary Clinton admitted that the war in Iraq was about oil, not about uh, nuclear weapons in one interview. Then we can see Kuwait, another country which the US rescued in 1990, the US and the UK. They rescued Kuwait. Uh, the UAE, Venezuela. Another country the U.S. is having a problem with, Venezuela, Hugo Chavez. Russia, another country the U.S. is having a problem with. There's a trend coming here. All of the big oil producers seem to have some problem with the U.S. So if you read about history, all over history, resources is the main reason of conflict and wars. Most of the empires, they want to get the resource from the other country. And uh, we can see these days the most important resource is oil. And uh, Libya, another country which had a war. But the United States also has some oil of its own. These days the United States is producing a lot of oil because Shit. it wants to put pressure on Russia about Ukraine. So Russia depends a lot on the oil price. So Russia's economy is not going so well now because the oil price is very low. One of the reasons is the US ramped up production. On purpose. If they increase the supply of oil, then the oil price goes down on the world market, life gets harder for Russia. So we can see that oil is in part important in geopolitics and also affects your life. Okay, the US is having a problem with Russia. They want to punish them by making cheaper oil. They ask their buddy Saudi Arabia to increase the production and also Kuwait and Iraq where they have their oil military presence and in the US and Russia is in a bit of a problem. So if you have oil, you're a wealthy country. Okay? Norway is the one who managed their oil the best. They put all the oil profits into some pension fund for people. So Norway has a massive pension fund. 
on other countries, they didn't manage it so well. But Norway was lucky because they found their oil quite late. <laughs> because they found their oil in the 60s and 70s, they could see the mistakes the other countries made and they could manage it better than the other countries. Here is a climate. Climate also matters. As you can see, in the very cold areas or the very hot areas, they're not, they also have the low income. They are going to be, right, it's very hard for them to get out of the low income in these areas because the crops don't grow well. We have this belt across the world, which is here, which you can see is the best climate, right? Northern Europe, North America, Northern Asia, and then just the same, just below the equator, just around here. So this is the main uh, agricultural area in the world, and also we can see these countries are doing okay. So the climate also has a, an impact. Malaria is a big issue in uh, Africa. It used to be a hundred years ago, malaria was all the way up here, right? But they, in Italy, for example, they drained all the lakes and so on to get rid of the mosquitoes. In Korea, do you have any malaria? You have mosquitoes. In Ireland, no mosquitoes. In the UK, no mosquitoes. So, because of this problem of malaria, it's very serious in this. What is, do you know about malaria? Yeah. Do you know anybody who caught malaria? Yeah. What happens? Die. Hmm? <laughs> they can die, but if they don't die, what happens? They're ill. They're very weak. Yes. Uh, can't work properly. Yeah. Also, my second cousin was working in Africa for some NGO and he caught malaria. Oh. He had to go back to the US, so he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. And he was very weak. And he always has malaria for the rest of his life. It's not able to be cured, right? Just he has to treat with some drugs. So, it's a kind of serious problem. So if countries have malaria, here and also in the tropical areas in South America, it, it's keeping them, holding them back. It's another reason why they're poorer countries, right? We also have some other diseases which can hold back the countries. So the government policy, if we are a landlocked country, but we are not near the coast, we need to build roads, build the internet and build relations. Okay. If we don't have enough water, we need to improve our irrigation system. If we have a lot of disease, improve our public health. If we have a lot of natural hazards, like high ET, we have to improve our detection and preparation. If we don't have much <coughs> fossil fuels, like Ireland and Korea, no fossil fuels, we need to be more energy efficient and use more renewable energy. Okay? Like we said, you're, you're going to start a renewable energy company, right? Because <laughs> you'll get a lot of loans. Korea. So, also culture, we can see here. Uh, what do you think? If families have, if we have more children or less children, which is going to be a uh, higher income or lower income country? What do you think? Lower income countries? Large families or high income countries, countries, large families. Low income, low income. Why? Low income country, many people are working in agriculture. So it's cheaper to have children? Yes. Yes, that's one reason. Less education about having children. Yes, less education about. And they don't have money for uh, for protection. Okay. Uh, also, in high income countries, people they start to have their families later, so there is not enough time for women to marry children. Okay. So they spend more time in education. Uh, I mean, like in, in for example, in Europe, usually people start to have their families in, at the age of thirty or thirty-five. So the woman can have like two or three children maximum. But in these low income countries they can start having children at the age of fourteen okay. or fifteen. So the position of women, right? Are women involved in the work workforce? In some of these countries the women are not involved in the workforce, right? Uh, mainly staying at home. So uh, we can see that this is some of the fastest growing uh, populations, right? With the highest 
children per women. So the darker areas where the high the population is growing the fast. We can see the Middle East, Africa, and this part of Asia. India, also India, they have high birth rates. China, quite low, Canada, the US. Okay. China had the one-child policy. So we can see that Japan's population has changed from a period, pyramid to the kite. So Japan was a pyramid, a lot of kids and not that many old people. But as the country gets uh, more developed, then we can get more, better health care. So more people live to a longer age. And uh, we have less uh, children. Okay. So we have the kite type of... Uh, do you understand kite? Yes. Do you fly a kite? Yes. With your father? Yes. Together? Yes. In the park? Yes. Like? Okay. I don't think you keep saying yes. So I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Okay. So uh, we also have the education. So Korea does very well on the P Have you heard of the PISA ranking? No. PISA is, uh, they go around and give tests to 16 year old students in maths, in reading and in science. Same test to all the students around the world. So which countries are doing the best 16 year old students? Korea. Shanghai, Singapore, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong. They're all written here because they're special economic zones of China, right? Or special districts of China. So, uh, first country then, Korea. Right? In, in mathematics. Are you guys good at mathematics? Yes. No. <laughs> yes? Then Japan, then Switzerland. Okay, what about reading? Japan, slightly better than Korea. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Are you going to go home and study reading? <laughs> Very hard? Maybe. So you get to read. It's like how many words can you read in a minute, right? Oh. Well, I think the Korean alphabet also helps people to read quickly. I think, right? Science. Uh, Ireland is down here, right? Science, Korea is here, right? Ireland is not too bad either. So OECD average, yes? Where is Ireland in mathematics? I can't find it. That's good Must be lower here. Korea, they have a Hagwon system, right? Yes. Did you go to the Hagwon when you were younger? Never. You were living in South Africa. Then. <laughs> Did you guys go to the Hagwon? Yes. Yeah. What is it? Hagwon is it? Um, Private Academy. Private. Private Academy. What did you study in the Hagwon? Piano. Mathematics? Piano. Piano? English. Hmm? And but I found out that they don't use calculators, so that's why they are good, we use them. We don't use the You're not allowed to use calculators We use calculator. Don't use calculator. Don't use calculator. Do you You're not allowed to use Of course. Even I, of course. From the first rating point. Even I. So, uh, anyway. The country, what do you think it means? Are you optimistic about Korea's future because the 16 year olds are scoring well in the exams? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. Are you guys optimistic about the future of Korea? Yeah. Ah, let me think about that. Mm -hmm. Do you think education makes a difference, especially maths and science? No. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they test people in maths and science? Because the world would score. Way of life. They're not interested. It's curious to go to study the setting to get better for that country. Not, they're not interested. Yeah, but one of these things, these tests, on uh, we can't. It's very hard to find a test for problem solving ability and creativity, right? So, just this test, but. These days, maths and science is uh, important because of the technology, right? If you study maths and science then you can have more IT graduates, you can have a more technology innovation. So I think this is a positive thing for Korea. So if we look at five years, ten years in the future, because Korea's students are scoring better at math and science, 
I guess their economy will be doing better than other countries, which are scoring low, not so high at maths and science, because their graduates are better quality, then they will do some better research or innovation. Okay. So maths and science are the main ones that countries focus on. Also, the reading. So. <coughs> In politics, it's related bad policies, financial insolvency, poor governance, adverse geopolitics. So we can see, if we talk, talk about adverse geopolitics, maybe Russia fighting with the US at the moment, it can do some damage to the Russian economy. Okay, so perhaps they should, uh, if they were more cooperative, uh, it could help them. Okay. Uh, we can also have a good role of the government, like in China, they developed a lot of infrastructure. In the US, they had a train accident just at the weekend, right? Somebody put on Facebook, trains in the US, trains in China. So a train in China looks really modern, like space age, right? Yeah. Train in the US looks like 50 years ago. Right? If, you, if you go to New York, the metro system is very bad, very old and so on. In, China is very clean and modern in Beijing. Right? So, if the government does that kind of thing, the infrastructure development has helped China, trains and roads and so on. Also, the health, education, and social services. And also, the rule of law. So, if we can, for example, uh, make it easier for people to do financial transactions, it can help our economy. So, the government is also important. In, in setting the rules and deciding on the policy for each country. So we also talked about corruption. Uh, the Corruption Perceptions Index, again we can see a similar type of countries here. Some of the worst corruption in these uh, countries. Uh, we saw before. This is public social expenditure as a share of GDP. Which governments are spending the most money on health, on education? Okay, on roads and so on. Denmark, number one, Sweden, France, Germany, right? Northern Europe, traditionally, Norway, the UK, the United States, Ireland, a little bit low here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> if we spend more money, we can have less child poverty. So we can see the relationship in this in this uh, child poverty is here. This is the money the government spends. The more money the government spends, the lower child poverty. Child poverty, 5%. Denmark. Government spends 15% of GNP. Okay? So, if we spend more money, we can have less child poverty. We can help uh, to make more inequality and help our country to uh, develop. Tax collection, it sounds quite boring, but uh, one problem in Greece at the moment. And collection of taxes is important for successful countries. It's one reason why the Middle Eastern countries have not developed. They haven't, Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, so on, they, they don't collect taxes from the people. They just don't have a system, a good system for collecting taxes. If we can collect taxes well, then we can spend the money later on public expenditure. So we can see that these countries who are spending a lot of money are also good at collecting taxes. Okay. So uh, Korea uh, down here, right near with the U.S. Can improve there. Uh, so Sub-Saharan Africa is the main challenge that we need to improve, and also Afghanistan, Nepal, Mongolia, Laos, those kind of poor transition economies. If we look at the infrastructure, this is Africa's railroads. This is India's railroads. Okay? The British will say, that's because of us. <laughs> right? They went to India, they did a lot of trade and they built a lot of rail railways in the 19th century. Right? But India... So you can see just the, with infrastructure, the government policy can make a difference to the, uh, to the country. Okay, so just to uh, sum up on this point, we have seen uh, a number of reasons why countries uh, are poor. And we have seen 
a number of measures of showing how to uh, measure people's development or happiness. Okay? So we can see that each country has a different situation, different reason why they are a poor country. So in order to develop that country, we need to focus on the particular problem of that country, whether it's bad government policy or uh, natural disasters or education, then we can make a proper uh, plan for getting that country out of the problem. Okay, and we've seen that uh, the Nordic countries are scoring quite high on the, these kind of rankings. And the countries that need the most improvement are in Sub-Saharan Africa and land of countries. Okay? We've seen the trend at the moment is that the quality is going to go down. Or inequality is going to go down. So, uh, let's uh, finish there for today. This is the end of do you have any questions? No. Mm -hmm.